The State of Israel fields the most powerful army in the Middle East, equipped with state-of-the-art weapons and munitions. The Israel Defense Forces must deal with numerous threats on several fronts. On Israel's southern border, Hamas terrorists launch Qassam rockets from the Gaza Strip. In the north, the Hezbollah is rearming and fortifying its positions in preparation for another confrontation with Israel. Iran presses on with its nuclear program, making continuous threats to destroy Israel entirely. At the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs, it is understood that Israel's fortitude and endurance do not depend solely on the quality and quantity of its planes and tanks. Today, the battle to protect the Jewish state means taking a clear stand on Israel's international legitimacy and its legal rights. And that means waging the war of ideas. When I came back to Israel um, from the United Nations where I served as Israel's ambassador, I thought I had basically finished with UN activities. But then I was shocked to learn that the United Nations was preparing a conference in Durban, South Africa, much of which was dedicated to fighting the state of Israel, but not fighting militarily against the state of Israel, rather undermining our very foundation by delegitimizing the state of Israel. The Jerusalem Center is headed by Dr. Dori Gold, former ambassador to the United Nations and senior advisor to former Israeli prime ministers. In recent years, the Jerusalem Center has become a key player in the fields of strategy, diplomacy, and foreign policy, where Israel faces its toughest battles ahead. According to that record, Khaled Mishal was not just a peripheral guest of a peripheral organization, Whammy. He actually had a four eyes meeting with Crown Prince Abdullah, who actually chaired that Whammy conference. The center's activities are directed by a team of senior fellows. Major General Yaakov Amidror, former head of the IDF's Research and Assessment Division. Ambassador Dr. Meir Rosen, a former Israeli ambassador to the United States and France. Eitan Bensour, former Director General of the Israeli Foreign Ministry. Ambassador Dr. Tzvi Mazel, former Israeli ambassador to Egypt and Sweden. Professor Gerald Steinberg, an expert on Middle East diplomatic and security issues. Professor Ruth Lapidot, recipient of the Israel Prize and international law expert. Dr. Manfred Gerstenfeld, renowned international expert on post-Holocaust anti-Semitism. The center in general is a think tank. Having a, a center in some ways, not just a building and a library, but round tables physically and uh, intellectually, where different components come together, it means that you can start to think about things otherwise wouldn't have come up and then implement them. The Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs has developed a winning formula that is critical in waging Israel's war of ideas, anticipating the threats that Israel is about to face, forming expert teams of former senior army officers and diplomats who prepare a strategic response, presenting the center's strategic policy initiatives to government leaders, lawmakers, the media, and opinion elites senior government ministers, senior military officials coming to the Jerusalem Center, delivering the highest level briefings to the leading foreign diplomats and the leading foreign journalists stationed in Israel. And so those journalists and those diplomats that come here regularly leave with much better, uh, more nuanced information, critical perspective and critical context so that they can do their jobs better. The professionals of the Jerusalem Center understand that in the battle for public opinion, every word carries tremendous weight and power. The center's experts have replaced the term occupied territories with disputed territories, a more accurate definition that is less dangerous for Israel and protects its international rights. A groundbreaking study by the center, the Defensible Borders Initiative, has defined Israel's legal rights and military need for territories crucial to the country's self-defense. The results of this study were presented to the Knesset Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee, and the Jerusalem Center's Defensible Borders Policy Initiative was embraced by the governments of Israel and the United States.
The Jerusalem Center has exposed the true intentions of Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad and the fact that nuclear weapons are being developed by Iran constitutes a threat not only to Israel but to the entire Western world. A legal document drafted by the members of the center establishes that Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is contravening the UN Convention on the Prevention of Genocide. This document was presented to the New York Bar Association and to British Parliament, among others. We would like to initiate legal proceedings against President Ahmadinejad on a charge of incitement to genocide. As the former Israeli UN Ambassador Dori Gold mentioned, it will move the international legal system from punishing genocide post facto to preventing it before it occurs. The conferences held by the center have become famous among professionals in the field. These conferences explore burning issues and are attended by government ministers and other senior leaders, Israeli and international military and political figures, and academics who specialize in the relevant topics. Israel in the eyes of international law. Ballistic missiles, a threat to Israel and to world peace. The status of Jerusalem as capital of the state of Israel. The rise of the Hamas movement in the Gaza Strip. We want to bring in Daniel Dyker. The center's experts have become sought-after interviewees in the world's leading media channels, in the press, on radio and television. Joining me now, the former advisor to Ariel Sharon, Dore Gold, is in Jerusalem. The Economist magazine takes an extremely pessimistic view of, of this summit. What's yours? Jerusalem must be, remain united under the sovereignty of Israel, and Israel is willing to withdraw to help create a Palestinian state, but it, it must have defensible borders. Dory, is there an, a, a link between Hamas and Al-Qaeda that we know of yet? Well, one of the disclosures I have in my book, The Fight for Jerusalem, is actual photographic evidence showing links between Hamas and Al-Qaeda. The Jerusalem Center directs its efforts outwards to drive home Israel's message, transcending barriers of language. The center has websites in Arabic, French, Hebrew, and English. In a world of electronic warfare, where the media is the battlefield, the Jerusalem Center spearheads the daily fight for Israel's international legitimacy, and protects its rights in the international community. Before wars begin, people engage in delegitimization. And therefore, if we can stop delegitimization, maybe we can protect the state of Israel. So partner with the Jerusalem Center. Your support of the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs is an investment in the security of the state of Israel and its capital, Jerusalem.